Yeah, the culture's high, honestly, and, and the culture's great from, from, my, from my standpoint. My point is, yeah, that's something I've always bragged on and took pride in. So if there's questions of that, concerns in that, um, I feel attacked. Uh, I'm sure some guys in the locker room do. Um, but at the end of the day, uh, it's a business, and, and the way that this, this business plays out, People don't get exactly what they wanted. There's always there's always sourness, I guess you can say, somewhere. And so, yeah, I don't want to make anything bigger than than, than what already comments have had. Booker McFarland joining the party. Good morning, sir. How are you? Good to see you. All right, Stephen A. I'm going to start well. with you Top on of the this. morning, people. Good. Top good. of the morning, Mr. Tampa. Good morning, Book. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Top of the morning. Top of the morning. Yeah, we all wish we were in Tampa right now. All right, Stephen A., I'm going to start with you. Are you buying what Dak has to say about the Cowboys culture being high? Hell no. Hell no. Why would I? Um, let, first things first, let me, let me get the, the, the positives out the way. Obviously, he was at a charity event thinking about those that are less fortunate than themselves. Obviously, children, cancer, fun, and what have you. So God bless him for that and being the, the, the conscientious individual that he is because he is a really, really good dude. So let's get that out the way first, okay? Having said all of that, we're talking football. And we're talking the culture of the Dallas Cowboys. And we're talking about people like Dan Orlovsky literally having the audacity, the unmitigated goal of going national television and talking about they got a winning culture and they ain't been in an NFC championship games in 29 years. This is what Dan Orlovsky said. I mean, he should get examined. It's just that simple. Having said all of that, Dak Prescott follows that up and you say, well, you know, you take it as an attack. Uh, you know, I take it as an attack against me. you damn right it's an attack against you the quarterback for the Dallas Cowboys. You look at the personnel that y'all have had in place. We can debate it till the cows come home, but the fact of the matter is y'all had opportunities to make some noise, and you haven't done it. Now, Booger, depending on who you are, whether you're a wild card team or you're a, or, or a top seed, you have to win a minimum of three, and in some cases, Shea Shea and Booger, four playoff games in one season to win a Super Bowl championship. Dak Prescott got two playoff victories in, in eight years. I mean, this is what we're talking about here. So you know what? This is the hard part about him. He's a great guy. He says all the right things. He's class personified, good-looking dude, works hard, cares, is conscientious. He's just not results-oriented when it counts because he doesn't have anything to show for it. you damn right it's an attack against you because you should be better than you have been as a quarterback for the Dallas Cowboys come postseason time, and you haven't been. And the fact that y'all can walk around with a straight face talking about there ain't no culture problems is evidence that there is a culture problem. Because if you think there's no culture problem and you keep falling up short year after year after year, and you still going to sit up there and say that with a straight face, that's the problem. Well, I, 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 I think we're missing just a little bit of it here because I, I think what Dak Prescott is talking about from a high culture standpoint, do they have a culture of winning? Yes, because they've won three years in a row at a very high level. I, is it a championship culture, Stephen A? No, it's not because they haven't won one. And I think that's the, that's the impetus of where this culture issue comes down at because the Cowboys' best players don't perform at their best when the game is on the line, when the games are at their highest, when it's postseason time, when it's time for your best players to step up to lead your team to a championship, they haven't done that. So therein lies the issue where the Cowboys have to get better. Now, is that culture or is that Dak Prescott playing his best or Michael Parsons playing his best or CeeDee Lamb or the defense being able to stop the run? I don't know if that's necessarily culture. That is figuring out how in those critical and key moments, I can get the best out of my team because you know you can't be as successful as this organization has been, Shannon, over the last three years without the culture being good. Now, how do you take that culture and get over the hump, over the hump where you can win a championship? There's only going to be one champion every season, and the Cowboys got to be able to figure out how do I get my best players to play and do the little things? I think that's what the Cowboys are missing. They're missing how can the little things that lead us to championships, the things that nobody else will notice at practice, around the facility, when nobody's watching, how can I do those things? That way, when all the chips are on the line, come January, Dak Prescott plays his best. 
The defense plays their best. Therein lies the issue with the Cowboys. I don't think the culture is the issue. We've seen organizations where the culture has been the problem, where they can't win, they can't get out of their way, everybody's pointing the fingers. There's infighting amongst the team. I'm not talking about the family members on the outside. I'm not talking about the fans on the outside. I'm talking about those 53 guys that go into that locker room and then another 16 if you count the practice squad. Those 70 guys right there, those guys have to have each other's back. And by and large, the Cowboys do that. Now, how do you get over the hump? I think that's the issue that Jerry Jones, Mike McCarthy, and Dak Prescott, whether no fault of his own, they got to figure out how to do that come January, Shannon. Can I ask you a question, Booger? Did you hear some of the comments that came sure. out of the locker room after they got – is that winning culture? The comments that I heard were comments from the family members about the players, not necessarily no, 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 CD no, no, no. or talking... Micah saying specifically – Go ahead, yeah, yeah. Micah, D-Law. That's my, I want you to talk about the Micah and D-Law comments. Is that winning culture? You could say it's honest culture, Shannon. I, I, no, no, I think man. that would be booger, fair. Booger, 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 booger. Let's not wordplay. You and I played this game. I played 14 years. I think you got a decade plus. Let's not play wordplay. Let's not do that. Let's not, let's not do, do that, Booger. You heard the comments from Micah and D-Law. Is that winning culture? It's a simple yes or a simple no. I like honesty, Shannon. Okay, so to me, honesty you is see, winning. But, because if we can't be honest you with see what each other, because if the shoe was flipped on the other side, I would expect you to tell me the same thing. See, I have no problem with honesty. I don't need you to tell me something in my face and then go behind the, my back and say something different. I believe that as, as a teammate and the battles that we've been through, Shannon, I can look you in the eye and I can say, hey, man, I don't think you played well enough. And you can say the same to me. Can I, can, can I challenge before Shannon chimes back in? Booger, let me challenge you on that. <laughs> I get the honesty part. I get what you're saying. But here's what my retort would be. I think what Shannon is saying, and I'm going to try to interpret for Shannon, even though he's right here on the air with me, because I'm, I'm vibing with what he's saying. What he's saying is when this is a winning culture, right. you win or you lose. And when you lose, we all accountable. Hell, it wasn't good enough. It wasn't up to snuff. There's no excuses. D-Law was talking about they were tired. Michael Parsons was saying, yo, I don't know what the hell happened to us. We just didn't see him there. But there's no excuse for that, et cetera, et cetera. Dak Prescott's coming out and he's saying we hearing stuff about our culture. Ain't really no culture problems. We just got to get it done. But what you're not hearing enough of is, yo, y'all, we stink. We stink when it counts. We were down 48 to 16. We got our ass kicked. Don't look at that damn final score, 48 to 32. We got bum rushed. We got beat down. We embarrassed. We ashamed. It's hard for us to show our damn face. It's bad, and we need to fix that. I think that's what Shannon is talking about, that level of accountability and that harsh criticism you rain down upon yourself. The Dallas Cowboys don't seem to be a team that does that. Go ahead, Booker. I mean, I'll let you, that you can say that. Well, here's the thing. You can say that, and I think you'd be right to say that from a standpoint of they don't come out and say that. Like, there are different levels of this, guys. There's a level of saying what Stephen A. said, and there's a level of saying to what I'm talking about, what we say to each other. Obviously, what we say to each other is going to be a whole lot more honest and, 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 and critiqueful than what we say to the media and things of that nature. So I understand what you're saying, Stephen A. I just push back to the point where we talk about if there's a winning culture and there's a losing culture. Well, if that's the case, guess what? There's only one winner every year. So you can still have a winning culture even when you don't win at all. Well, that's not now, you have a championship culture. That's not what we were saying because, remember, I gave San Francisco credit because they've been to two Super Bowls and about four NFC championship games in the last five years. That's a winning culture. That's a winning because you might not have closed the deal yes. with a championship, but you're knocking on a door. You did. So it's not just about the championship. But if you're the Dallas Cowboys and you can't make it to an NFC championship game for 29 straight years, I don't understand how that's a winning culture. I don't understand that. Go ahead, Shannon. I want to I want, I want end with this. When New England was winning, what was coming out, what was disseminating out of that locker room from the players? Kansas City in this situation, what's disseminating out of this? When they lost, they give credit to the other team. They don't make excuses. All I'm saying is this. At some point in time, to have a winning culture, you got to finish this. At least get to an NFC championship game. That's all. You, how about that?
You talk about all these wins. You got 35, 36, 37 wins over the last three seasons. What do you got to show for it? You know, I will say this. I know what you got to show. You, you need to show us what you've been drinking this morning, Shannon, because even though you're making book points, you know, you, you, you know, that attitude seemed a little bit different. Now, what was that? Shea by Laporte. Shea by Laporte. Shea by Laporte. Did you, Laporte. 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 Did you hear about that cognac that he got, Booger? Booger, you hear about the cognac he's got? Got to send some down to Tampa. I heard about the cognac. I mean, evidently, that, that cognac gets you right. I'm talking about Shea Shea looking uh, uh, fire over there. He got a glisten yeah, and a glow about it. I can't tell what's white on his teeth or his shirt. 